the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God, our Father, you are light and in you there is no darkness. Lord, by your power, we ask you to rebuke Satan. Lord, by your power, we beseech you to resist and help us overcome every level of darkness that is finding expression in our personal lives, in our family, and in our community. Lord, by your power, we ask you to help us resist and help us overcome darkness at the family and bloodline levels. Oh Lord, we ask for that which only you can do. We implore you to shine your light upon us. Bring us into your light. Dear Lord, we ask you for the drawing in that only your spirit can do. Take us deeper. Take us higher. And take us further into you. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the 14th day of this conference, Born to Win. We continue from where we left off yesterday. So like Moses, it is it is very possible for you not to have a political throne, but you are brought to a certain contest that has to do with an administrative jurisdiction in the spirit and then the anointing accompaniment for that level of ordination becomes a mantle and anyone that violates the authority of that mantle that you carry comes down with bitter judgment instantly like it happened to Pharaoh and the Egyptians and this will make people understand that what you are carrying can only be from God the most high. I'm speaking of an anointing that stands on you, that can make nonsense of a human, political, social, religious leadership because you are sitting in the spiritual capacity of the patron of the territory. May the Lord give you understanding. How many of you realize that Jesus in the day of his flesh did not have a church or a pulpit? How many of you realize that? That Jesus, in the day of his flesh, didn't have a church or a pulpit. How many of you realize that? So it meant that Jesus' ministry was territorial. In fact, almost all the miracles that you read in the Bible that Jesus performed were done in real life motion. If you don't know, I'm telling you. All the miracles that Jesus performed, they were done in real life motion. Not in religious pre-prepared gathering settings so they were done in real life motion listen 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 before jesus performed the miracles there was no opening prayer there was no praise and worship there was no speaking in tongues for three hours so and mind you i'm not saying these things are not important i am just describing how jesus went about his own ministry i'm just describing the ministry of jesus that's all I'm doing. Don't come and look for trouble for me. So like I was saying, these miracles took place in normal life situations. So for instance, Jesus is walking. He's going for lunch in his mother's house with his disciples. Then they see across the street, some people are going for burial and they are singing some dirges. Some dirges like... Naked I came, naked we are going, singing the just like that. Then, then Jesus asks his disciples, who is dead? And then Jesus walks up to the funeral people and he asks the mourners, what is up? And then the mourners will say, are you mad? Don't you have eyes? Then Jesus says, sorry, become, 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 Indo, sorry. Then Jesus touches the coffin. And the person comes back to life. And then everyone begins to run helter-skelter. And then Jesus makes a nonsense of their funeral celebrations just like that. 
and the people who have made up their mind to cry they are even disappointed then jesus goes and he eats his lunch like nobody's business and for the next couple of days people are gathered in different corners debates and discussions are ongoing about the raising of a dead by some man b then four days later jesus is going to buy some kelewele in the market and then someone shouts ah is that not the man who raised the dead and then the people begin to follow him like he's a superstar then one woman says to herself Chabi, ewo, is this the man Walai, walai. if he can raise the dead then my own case now small if i can touch the helm of his garment then i'll be healed of this 12 years bleeding you know, and healed she was this was how jesus did ministry this was how jesus did ministry everyday life he is walking. He, he comes across a cripple and says, Oh, what happened to you? Begin to walk. Look, I'm telling you, if, if you get understanding and step into the portals and activations that are being opened by the power of the Holy Spirit in this conference, eh? because, see, I'm not just speaking. No. I keep telling you that I'm speaking under the authority of Christ. Portals are opening. And if you can get understanding and step into the portals and activations and opening by the power of the Holy Spirit in this conference, eh? you can walk into a family and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed of this disease and the person will be healed. You will even be surprised at yourself. You, you, you can walk into a space and say, by the, by the name of Jesus, I, I command, I command. And everything will just... You, you can arrest that thing, that person that has been tormented or tormenting you for years. Go and check the Old Testament. You will never see a prophet that had a pulpit because their ministries were territorial. So the pulpit masters of today who think that unless you have a pulpit, God cannot use you. Jesus didn't have a pulpit for your information. The prophets of the Old Testament never had a pulpit. Because their ministries were territorial. They operated as kings from thrones. They, they roar and the whole nation is trembling. So today, today, we have only God knows how many churches. Only God knows how many churches. Every Sunday, one new one is springing up. Yet we cannot influence government. Common government, we cannot influence. Our, our, our ministries have become pulpit ministries. Our dealings are, are, are about mundane things. You buy a house, you buy a car, you travel uh, uh, abroad, you, you get visa, you make more money, you, you, you marry. That is when, when people are pressing into the spirits. These are the things that you are interested in, mundane things. Let me share with you a fundamental law of authority in the visible and the invisible realm. In the invisible realm, hmm, on the basis of authority, God is the highest ranking authority. He is number one in the invisible realm in terms of authority. That is why we have run to him and we said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. So we are using the authority of the Lord to rebuke Satan because in the spiritual realms the highest authority is what God so God is like not God is like God is our father so we are hiding behind him and we are using his authority to shape Satan now in the physical realm the highest ranking authority is humans that's how it was designed but our, our, our fathers the first humans handed it over to Satan when Jesus came, he got it back for us. So if you go into Genesis, Genesis will say, I give you dominion over the aquatic, over the atmospheric, and over the territorial regions. We discussed these issues into details in the Rick and Dale conference that we had at the beginning of, 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 of the season. But this dominion that I'm talking about is not automatic for man. There are certain principles that humans have to engage in to be the number one authority like the way it was designed in the visible realms you see this was how god himself ordained it the authority 
that humans have is not original our authority is delegated and delegated power cannot be delegated it means that your alignment to god is what determines the authority you walk in so if you see someone that is beginning to walk naked of authority it means that the person has lost his or her alignment with god meanwhile it is it is interesting how we have developed other convenient ways in trying to give people relevance than authority in the kingdom of God. And hear me out loud when I tell you that a man's description, a woman's description is consistent with the authority that he or she has from God. So if you go to Psalm 8 verse 3 to 8, the psalm says, when I gaze to the skies and I meditate on your creation, on the moon, the stars, and all you have made, I can't help by, but wonder why you care about mortals. Why do you care about mortals? Why do you care about sons and daughters of men, these specks of dust that are floating about the cosmos? Why do you care about them? You place the Son of Man just beneath God, just beneath Elohim, and you, you, you honored him like royalty crowning him with glory and honor you ordain him to govern the works of your hands to nurture the offspring of your divine imagination and you place everything on earth under his feet all the domesticated animals the wild animals in the fields and the forest the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea and all the multitudes of living things that travel the currents of the oceans you place all of this under his feet So Psalm 8 says you were made a little lower than Elohim and that is where you derive your authority from. So Romans chapter 8 verse 26 will say the spirit helps our infirmities. We do not know how to pray as we ought to but the spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. My dear friends, listen to the voice of wisdom speaking to you. In the natural, you are incapacitated. You are full of weaknesses and cause antidote to all of your weakness is the holy spirit that's a punchline it's a tweetable in the natural you are what incapacitated you are full of weakness and cause antidote to all of your weakness is in the holy spirit so the idea of a functioning human is human plus the holy spirit human plus the holy spirit human plus the holy spirit that's the idea of a functioning human human depending on the Holy Spirit and partnering with the Holy Spirit. So that is what the psalmist meant when he prayed in Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So I will look to the hills and from where shall my help come from? Look. Mortal man is insufficient in himself and what swallows our insufficiency as ordained by God is the Holy Spirit, the rod of God's strength that is released to aid you and as you partner with the Holy Spirit, then you begin to ascend your throne. And as you partner with the Holy Spirit, it is very important that you take your prayer life too very seriously. That is why Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says that, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So human beings were designed to be praying beings. That is why you have a spirit that can descend the spirit realm and a body that can descend the physical realm. You have to assess the things in the spirit with your spirit and implement them there. And that is what priesthood is. So prayer is we saying to God, God, come and help us out. That is prayer. Prayer is we saying to God, God, come and help us out. And because of jurisdiction issues, God will only come on invitation. And just in case the activity of God around your life is not secure, it means you are fainting. What is the opposite of prayerful? It's not prayerless. 
The opposite of prayerful is not prayerless. If you are not prayerful, you are fainting. That's the opposite. That is what scripture says. That's the perspective of scripture. So if the activity of God around your life is not secure, it means you are fainting. If you are not a being of prayer, you will faint. Fainting means that you are on spiritual life support. If you are not praying, then you are fainting. It means you are on, 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 on spiritual life support and, and, and you will be a victim of atrocities. You will be a victim of evil. You will be a casualty of spiritual warfare. You will be a victim of the economic system. So when you begin to faint because of your prayerlessness, what is going to happen is that every circumstance will bend you. Poverty will make you become a liar. Pressure will make you commit immorality. You become a different thing outside of your ordination. And the immortals will look at you and they will wonder if it is you that they sent from the Shamayim. Meanwhile, I need to balance this because we live in an era where a lot of people are praying, which is good. But they are not ready to invest in studying God's word and getting spiritual intelligence. When I look around, I can see prayer ministries all over the place. That is good. But people are not ready to invest in studying God's word and getting spiritual intelligence. Your prayer will not amount to anything if you don't know the word and if you don't have spiritual intelligence. So prayer must go hand in hand with the study of the word and investing in spiritual intelligence. If, if you don't seek out to study the word like you pray and acquire spiritual intelligence, you'll be a prayer warrior but you don't have the wisdom to read in between the lines. And this is how people become casualties of spiritual warfare. That is why we come up with conferences like this to teach you spiritual intelligence and the word of God. If you don't embrace prayer now, eh? Are you okay? Okay, how do you become a person of prayer? Start talking to God. Just start talking to God. Imagine he is there at your side. Imagine that he is your invisible friend. Talk to him. Talk to him about everything. Psalm 80 verse 18 says, Quicken us, Lord, and we shall call upon your name. Ask God to quicken you. Ask him to quicken you. Then you will mount up like eagles. And he will give you strength. He will give you strength when you are weary. And he will increase your power when you are weak. To the extent that even when youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall, you hope in the Lord your strength will be renewed. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and you will not be faint. And prayer will become a lifestyle. 24 hours will be too short. 7 hours will be too short. 17 hours will be nothing tonight. Psalm 110 verse 1 The Lord says to my Lord sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Continue to pray your prayer intentions surround your prayer intentions with prayer. Let us pray. Behold the cross of the Lord begone all evil powers. The Lord rebuke you Satan. The lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has conquered. Hallelujah. Come, O Holy Spirit, and illuminate us. Let your glory inside us come alive. Let your anointing inside us come alive. And let your power inside us come alive. Help us to win like we are born to do. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. What did we say is the prayer phrase again? The Lord rebuke you. Satan. Have a prayerful day. Shalom and God bless you.